Oh wow. <laughs> I think we've discovered the culprit. Oh, oh, oh Christ. Oh. Oh, Let there be no doubt in anyone's mind, I, I am not a professional. I'm not a mechanic in any way, shape or form, clearly. I am riding high though off the success of my first ever mechanical repair work, which you can actually see in this video here, which I recorded a few weeks ago now. It's safe to say confidence levels are riding high. So I'm gonna to attempt to bring this Suzuki outboard back to life. Now this is our backup outboard. We bought it last year. It was really cheap. We paid like a couple of hundred pounds for it. But sadly, that's where the good vibes of this story end because it only lasted us a couple of months before it died. And we've never managed to get it started again. So it's probably gonna cost us more in mechanics fees alone to get that dead outboard up and running and started again than it even cost us to buy it in the first place. So I don't know about you, but that seems as good a reason as any to start, I don't know, flexing those DIY skills again. What's the worst that can happen? Oh, <laughs> All right, so first things first, as always, the YouTube consultation to try and figure out what's wrong. How to fix an outboard that is hard to start. All right, we've got options. Four cycle engine, that thing should start and run on like one pull, two pulls max. I've already tried running so after watching a few videos now, the consensus seems to be that if you have an outboard that's hard to start, 90% of the time the culprit apparently seems to be the fuel system. So I think, I think that's where we're going to start. Although first things first, we're going to need some tools. So after watching and digesting a few videos, I decided to start the ball rolling by removing and inspecting the outboard's carburetor. The first thing we're going to do is take off the throttle cable, and if memory serves, it's just loosening in this screw and taking that out. And then the second thing was this thing here apparently just unclips. That literally just had a little screwdriver under there, just pop that out. And then all we've got left after that is we've got this little hose, which the fuel line. We'll just pinch that little clip and hopefully that will come straight off. One carburetor. Remember which way it goes back on. Okay, that's the beauty of these videos. So I can remember how to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Uh, there's a little gasket there. I just want to be careful we don't lose that. And then I'm going to transport this somewhere safer. Screw this thing back in place. So again, it's going to make remembering where to put everything a bit easier. And um, we're going to close that up and leave you for a minute. And you, my friend. You have a date with the workshop. So when I dismantle this, one of the things that I do with any mechanical job that I do now is I remove a piece and I put it down in order. So when it comes to reassembling, I can just work my way backwards. Hopefully all the pieces go back in the right spot. If there's anything I forget, then I just play the video back. That's what this is for. We need to remove this and we need to remove this. And the way in which we do that is we need to take a little flat-headed screwdriver in there and, and take these off here. Okay, so that one there is the choke. And then this one here with the spring is the uh, throttle. And when you let go of the throttle, that's gotta squeeze shut. 
And a couple of things to think about here, if I remember correctly, is this little spring at the corner on the bottom there. It's got a latch one side, and then you want to latch the other top of the spring side here, and that, that compresses the spring so it's so close. It's really important we put that back together. Close it shut. Exhibit A. The first bit. That should now that should now fall out. Just like that. Okay. So if you look there, one side is slightly more warm than the other. That's the side that goes in face down, but just to make just to make sure I don't forget it, the side that was face down, I put face down here. Exhibit B. Remove the screw. I'm gonna leave that spring on. And I think this now this should now lift clean out. And we're gonna leave that all assembled. There's actually in fact, there's a little, you see that? It's a little low ring. It's going to very gently want to damage it. Take that O ring out. I'm actually going to leave that over the bottom here so I don't lose it later on. Exhibit 4. You can't go from. Exhibit D. Yeah, that's what they say in the courtrooms. I would like to. I'd like to present the jury with Exhibit A. That's you what they started do. with A, exhibit... B, C, D. Oh, I thought you said Exhibit 1, Exhibit 2, and then you skipped to letters, which will get confusing. Did I? Mm. Oh, I'm dyslexic, so <laughs> that's my excuse. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. That's the first one out. And then we're going to switch over to the other side. We need to do the same thing. So we just close this, I guess it's a valve of some description. And again, just a simple flat-headed screwdriver. If I come to the light, you can see that that mark there, it doesn't have it on the other side. I don't really know if it makes a difference. Um, I guess you've got a little hole on that side, so maybe it does. But um, you can see that line, that bar mark through the middle, coincides with what it sits up against in the carburetor. So just to help you remember which way around everything goes. Oh. And this one again has got the little O-ring on there already, so... We're going to take the cap off. We're going to need a different screwdriver for that. This should just lift off. Again, a little gasket under there. There's a load of bits of dirt, almost like some water and bits mm. of crud in there. So doesn't look good. Looks like it needs a good clean. Okay, now we're going to take the float ball off. That is a 10mm socket. There might be some residual fuel in there, so... Oh, wow. <laughs> I think we've discovered the culprit. Uh, yeah, so there's all sorts of, like, jelly. Oh, gosh. Look at that. And it's absolutely full of jelly. So if any of you guys know what's caused that, that is the float bowl of our carburetor and it's full of what I can only describe as a translucent jelly. That will definitely be why it wasn't starting and running then. I feel good that we've <laughs> felt like, yeah. we're like, okay, the engine's not working, what is it? And YouTube said, probably the carb, and we've got this far and it's probably the carb. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> So gunky and all around the float as well. This is all super gunked. Now I've given that a clear out that there seems to be a little bit of corrosion in there too. So I'm going to give that like a really good scrub and clean that because I imagine that corrosion would only break off and infiltrate the jets, which would also stop the engine. The way I understand this float thing working is basically when that float sits in the bowl, the bowl fills up the fuel. When that fuel gets to a certain 
level, it pushes the float up, and that float stops any more fuel going in. It stops the engine flooding, I suppose. And you should be able to blow into the side there. When it's open, it should be free. And then if you push it up, it should stop. And that's how you know that's all functioning properly. Ah, seems to work okay. One less thing to worry about. Okay, so this corrosion, all I'm gonna do is just very, very gently with the screwdriver, just like chipping it off. And then I'll uh, I'll spray a little bit of carb cleaner in there and then give it a clean out. But I'm just, I don't really wanna like scratch this metal up too much. Just wanna just get rid of the, the worst of it. I've just noticed, I don't know if you can see it there. There you go, there's another screw just there. A little flat-headed screw. Apparently there's a jet or something hiding under that. So I'm just gonna take that out. Carly's kicked me out. She said I'm not the man she first met. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, she, has, she has totally kicked me out. Uh, but that's because this carburet cleaner smells really bad. <laughs> uh, she didn't want the house smelling like some sort of industrial garage, but it's fine. There's still plenty of light. I can get this, I can get this done outside. Um, so, the carb cleaner, as I said, that was an Amazon purchase. Another Amazon purchase was this little thing here. Um, made in China. Apparently that's some sort of carburetor cleaning kit. Uh, yeah, I'll, pu I'll pop the link to anything I bought in the description. Uh, if you can think of anything better to use, then again, jump in the comments, let me know. I'm a total beginner to all of this. I'm just feeling a bit brave and bold after the last mechanical video I made that didn't go terribly. So uh, yeah, I learn from you guys in the comments. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna see if it works. If it doesn't work, you probably won't see this video. So spoiler alert, this has probably worked. Um, but that doesn't mean I did it as well as I could possibly do it. That's where you guys come in, so. A little bit of behind the scenes of how this is all filmed. I just literally hold it in between my legs. It's, it's not exactly a high level setup. So let's have a look in these. So we've got a jet there, jet there, apparently jet there. Oh, oh, oh Christ. God. Oh, fuck. Okay. Ah. Uh. Ah. Oh. Wow. That's like mace. Oh my goodness. Note to self. Oh, look at my eye. Oh, wear goggles. Let me let me go get some goggles. Every day's a school day. All right, take two. Let's try again. Okay. Now I'm just gonna take the bowl. Obviously I've cleaned off some of that corrosion, but now I'm just gonna use some of this to... But that wasn't just a random person saying well done to me for cleaning the engine. There's rowing training going on behind me. Just, you know, my entourage isn't that big. <laughs> Trying to get as much of this sediment as I can, all this corrosion, whatever this is, around the, uh, the float. Otherwise it'll all come off again and end up in the jets. All right, check this little bag out. This is the kit that I got. Okay. So these look like all tiny little super thin rods. That's like the tiniest one. Okay, can you see that? This basically feels like a bristle. This is pretty light. I'm gonna just, again, just check really gently because I don't want to do any damage to these. There's just nothing obstructing. Oh, I'm scaling up some of the big boy stuff now. There we go. bowl back on I believe this way is this the screw that comes on the bottom mm. 
Mm, so we've got this little screw which goes over what looks like a little jet. Okay, this gasket. Okay, it's that way around like that. The gasket is in place. And put the cap back on. Okay, all the screws are back in. The next bit we've got is this shaft. It should just slide in there. And then we're going to put that little disc back on. One flat headed screwdriver coming up. And then that should, that's the, I don't know what the word is to describe it, but the gateway for the, for the choke, that all seems good. Okay, so as we slip <clears throat> this next shaft thingy madoobly in, uh, we need to load the spring up so it shuts off again. And I think if we just get a little screwdriver just behind the spring here, can you see that? All right. So that hopefully will give us, we can just see, there you go, let's just load it up. There you go, so that moves. But at this point, if you close the choke up and you put this all the way down, at this point, this is gonna hit here. So we just need, I think, this little screw here with the spring in it. This last little piece here. And that is the throttle thingy madoobly. Whatever the technical name is for the dish, all of you mechanic types, any of you, if you just want to let me know, uh, shaft bronze face thingy madoobly doesn't sound like it's technically correct. Let's go put the Humpty Dumpty back together again. I'm going to see if I can actually remember how to do this without referring back to my old videos, just purely on memory. I took this apart a couple of days ago just for context. Doesn't look too tricky. Gasket goes. Turtle cable, you can just see the bite marks here. So we're just going to put that back in the same spot. I assume that will work. There we go. that back together now giving the engine just a little clean and then cover it in some silicone spray so hopefully I'll give it protection for the season see if it starts moment of truth bloody works. Right, let's go take it for a little run. Can you hear that? Something doesn't quite feel right there. The engine's purring in terms of it's not spluttering, but now there's something new going on. It's like it doesn't want to... It's like it doesn't want to stay in gear. Alright, 
so that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, I'm gonna have another look on YouTube and see what I can find. It feels basically just like it's jumping out of gear, like it's not sticking in gear. I've got a horrible feeling like it might be a knackered gearbox. I mean, I paid a couple of hundred quid for the outboard, just a little cheapy second-hand thing. I imagine a gearbox would cost more than that, so... Ah! That should be okay. There's actually two oil seal. There's an oil and... Uh, if you're having problems with it slipping, then you know you're just going to have to replace this clutch dog anyways. Uh, this is what a new one looks like here sides there edges are not rounded off it's still solid and that's golden there i think i might have figured it out oh, this guy's good this guy's really good big shout out to key west kayak fishing mate you put out some awesome videos great content i'm going to link to them in the description if you guys you know want to figure out how to pull engines apart and put them back together then go check him out it looks like it looks like i may have figured out what might be the issue and hopefully it's not the gearbox. It's like a part of the gearbox, but it's not the whole gearbox. It's a thing called a dog clutch or something. So I'm gonna see if I can find one of those, order one of those, and then let's see where we're at. Okay, welcome back to the future. I've always wanted to say that. Uh, I think, I hope, I hope we've got the bits we need. I had to order these all the way from America. I literally couldn't find them in England. There are our new bits. Apparently this thing here is called a clutch dog. And if your gears are slipping, it's generally because this is worn. Don't take my word for it. Key West kayak fishing said so. And he looks like he knows what he's talking about. All right, let's see if we can fit this. And if we can, fingers crossed. Man with YouTube videos conquers outboard engine. Okay, if this doesn't work, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call, him, I'm gonna call him a mechanic. First things first, after watching that video, we're gonna to need to take the propeller off. We're gonna to need to drain the oil out of the leg. I'm gonna catch all that in this bucket, and then we're gonna take this face off, and then hopefully we can swap the bits over, put some oil back in it, and then we're all up and running again. So I've just, I've just opened these two screws here to allow the oil to drain out whilst I unscrew the front to try and get this off. Can't get the propeller off. And there we are. Okay, for some reason I just can't get the propeller off. It should just slide off once you've taken the split pin out apparently, but I don't know whether something's corroded in there and pinching it shut, but I'm used quite a lot of force and I can't get it off. Um, I've cunningly just dropped the pin from the end into the drink, so that's not good, but um, this does look a little bit worn here, so let's see if that changes anything. And pulls down and this just slips out. Now the oil is black, but it's not milky, so that would say the oil seals are probably okay at this point. Um, so there's the old one. So you see that all right? If you look on that corner there, that's pretty worn away. And then in my hand is the uh, is the new one. I'm looking at this. I'm not gonna lie, the dog clutch thingy majiggy I took out, although it has a tiny, tiny little bit of wear on it, it doesn't look like it's a dramatic enough amount of wear that it would be causing the engine to be like, ka dunk, ka dunk, ka dunk, ka dunk. <sighs> so now I'm worried it probably is a bit of a bigger issue, but we'll, we'll put it all back together first and see where we are. But let me, let me show you how, how it works. For this one, you literally just release the spring, the dog clutch comes out, and that's all there is to it. What you need to do is you need to pump the oil back into the leg. You have to pump it up here until it overflows through here. So I needed to buy one of these, which is a special adapter to go in here. And you can see just here that it screws 
screws inside then pumps the oil in and then you've got to try and get it out without losing all the oil. I'm hoping that when that's full and overflowing out of here you can put the screw in the top and that will create like a seal stopping it coming out too fast I think. First things first we've got to put the <sighs> got to put the propeller and everything back back on. Let's painfully screw these back in. In fact I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on those so they're a bit easier hopefully to get in. Hopefully we didn't lose too much there. Amazing. I could not have done I can't believe that's working. That engine, that engine hasn't run for nearly six months. It was dead, it wouldn't start, and then by the time we figure out what the starting problem was, we got it going, and then the gearbox I thought was knackered, but it wasn't, it was just a little thing. Ah, oh, amazing! YouTube, I love you, I love all of you amazing uh, content creators out there. I think it's Key West kayak fishing. Sorry if I've got that wrong. Your videos are amazing. Thank you for making them. They've saved my bacon. Uh, for all of you guys who know a lot more about engines, who always jump into the comments to share any thoughts or feedback or anything I could have done better. Thank you all as well, because I learned so much from you guys. Um, if any of you have any idea why that propeller wasn't coming off, or there's anything you think I missed, I couldn't see a circlip or anything like that, um, then again, jump in the comments and let me know. Uh, I know most of you who know how to work on engines are like, okay, whatever, what you're excited about, but that's so satisfying as a complete non-mechanic, watching some videos, pulling this thing apart, and then it working. Ugh. And what a place for the GoPro battery to run out, just as I'm saying thank you. For those of you who are interested to see the very first video that well, basically gave me the courage to start tackling more mechanical jobs. It's this one here. And uh, for those of you that might be new here and haven't had a look around our boat yet and you want to see some of the upgrades and updates we've made, then check out this video here. Till that, see you next time.